Hello everyone! Today's webinar will be solely devoted to HD mode, an essential part of Arctic Studio 15.1 that will make our users reconsider their EVA and LEO scanning workflows. Today I would like to focus on the practical aspects of how we use HD mode and some tips that will help you optimize your HD scanning workflow. Here's our plan for today. What improvements can you expect with HD mode? How does HD mode work? HD scanning workflow optimization, best practices, and uh, some HD related challenges. If you're interested to watch or rewatch a particular part of the video, feel free to find the corresponding time code in the description below and move straight ahead to the part of the webinar. To start, I'd like to say that we don't see HD mode as merely a way to improve the resolution of 3D models. We define it, first and foremost, as a compelling tool that introduces a whole new class of objects that you would not previously have been able to scan with EVA or LEO. Museum relics, archaeological items, certain engineering objects, all things that used to be neglected due to the sensitive nature of their surfaces are items that are now ready to be scanned. I'm not saying that we can scan mirrors or perfectly transparent windows, but take a look at these surfaces right here. HD mode lowers the minimal size of the object that is feasible to scan with LEO or EVA. Smaller than medium sized items that you would normally use Spacebar for are now accessible with these two scanners as well. Uh, the results that we will get are not quite as good as what the Spacebar is capable of, but good enough for reverse engineering and further processing. Let's have a look at this compressor, for example. It's only about 180 millimeters tall but all the small geometrical elements are clearly distinguishable. But of course, we should not neglect the rest of the improvements that the HD mode brings about. So the first one is resolution. Uh, now we can go as low as 0.3 or under certain conditions, even 0.2 resolution for Leo and, and uh, EVA scans. Please note that the essential rules of scanning are still very important. So if you are scanning for the maximum resolution, make sure to scan the object from a number of different angles, uh, maintain the right distance to the object, and ultimately do everything to achieve the best registration quality as possible. The size of the object uh, also matters. So the larger the object that you're scanning, the more effort it might require to achieve the best registration quality. Uh, but it should not come as a surprise to you because pretty much the same rules applies to your normal SD scanning workflow. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention regarding the resolution, uh, if you're aiming for the best 0.2 resolution, the lowest one, uh, you will need to increase the default point density setting, but we will discuss that uh, in detail in the bottom end. Right, another improvement that HD mode brings about is noise reduction. HD fusions generally contain substantially less surface artifacts. So with neither old lies removal nor any manual labor, we can achieve very clean results. Uh, in lots of cases, the noise reduction functionality will make a difference between a nice and clean model that can be further processed or 3D printed and a messy, a damaged project that is just not worth the hustle. Uh, I'd like to mention, however, that you will still see some noise around the object, but it won't be that dangerous kind of noise that is too close to the surface that uh, can fuse together with some fine geometrical details. All the noise that you will see, the vast majority of it, can be easily filtered out by small object filter afterwards. Okay, now substantial improvement in sharp edges reconstruction. That's another one. So HD mode reconstructs corners, thin and sharp edges with much higher accuracy than was previously possible. Uh, that way, the edges of the object do not look too smooth or overly blended. Wires are also reconstructed considerably better now. Okay, another improvement, pretty big one. Now we capture and reconstruct more information about the surface. Uh, in fact, all that extra surface that we get thanks to the HD mode have always been recorded but it wasn't until the HD mode was developed that we finally got means to prevent the surfaces from being filtered out and to reconstruct them. Uh, what I'm trying to say is all that additional data, all these additional uh, 
uh, elements, additional surfaces uh, reconstructed by the HD algorithm are the actual real authentic parts of the object and not uh, merely an assumption that our algorithms make. So these are three, well not, not three part, and these are main advantages of the HD mode that I'd like to point out today. Let's finally delve into the magic of the HD reconstruction. And I'd like to start with Leo, just a few words about how we set everything up. So for the HD toggle becoming available on the Leo scanning screen, it needs to be activated first. And we do that through the setting. So we go to the setting, scanner, record HD data. Uh, as you can see in the right picture, we don't just switch it on, but we can actually choose how frequently we want Leo to create HD frames. The default number is one eighth, which means uh, there will be one HD frame recorded for every eight regular frames. Uh, this mechanism was introduced to give users more control over the size of the project, which is specifically important uh, for Leo given the higher FPS ratio. For the most cases, the default ratio is enough for successful registration fusion, but you can also increase the number of HD frames created by choosing one sixth, one fourth, or even go higher than that. So try to experiment with it if you are confident in your hardware and you're scanning a large object for maximum resolution. Once we have turned HD recording on, we will now be able to choose between the regular and the HD scanning modes. On the regular, um, oh no, not on the regular, on the HD data, on the HD scans, you will see a small badge saying HD so that it's easy to differentiate between the SD and HD projects. And when it comes to importing your data into Arctic Studio, uh, you can use all the instruments available apart from the SD card import. Upon connecting the scanner to your computer via Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection and clicking on the project with HD data, we need to decide what type of data we're going to input. So keeping the use HD reconstruction checkbox empty uh, will trigger the regular scans import and ticking the box will lead to the HD data import. Uh, but when you use HD reconstruction, you have one more very important choice to make. It is HD data density. And this is a key parameter for HD reconstruction that controls the balance between the resolution and reconstruction improvements on the one hand and the size of the project on the other. Uh, the multiplier, the multiplier number that you choose uh, reflects the amount of points in HD scans compared to SD scans. So HD scans made with 16x setting will have 16 times more points than SD scans. Uh, the data resolution multiplier that we recommend using by default is 4x for both EVA and LEO. Um, but the higher setting such as 8x, 16x or 36x will allow you for even more uh, will allow for even more surface to be reconstructed and uh, will sharpen the fine details even further. Obviously, the more points uh, your scans have, the more RAM they'll need and more time they, they take to get processed. I'd like to know that uh, one Leo project can be imported into Arctic Studio several times uh, with different density multipliers. So in case you have imported it with a very low multiplier, you can then re-import it with a high one, so which is pretty, pretty good. Uh, and one more interesting detail, uh, the density setting does not affect the reconstruction time. So the reconstruction time uh, will be more or less the same for the whole range of multiplier numbers. When it comes to EVA, the situation is slightly different. To turn on HD mode for EVA, we need to enable the respective checkbox and choose data HD data density. Uh, again, that all happens on the very first scanning tab. Uh, and just like with Leo, uh, that HD data density defines the number of points that we reconstruct. But unlike scanning with Leo, the current version of Arctic Studio uh, does not give you the chance to re-import or re-reconstruct 
the same scan uh, to, into HD twice, which means that um, if you picked an irrelevant HD reconstruction density number, uh, you're going to have to rescan it, rescan the whole object if you want to have data with a higher point density. Uh, this is something that will be changed in the future, but as of now, this is how it works. As for the number of frames, um, we've just established that for Leo, you can control how many HD frames will be created. Uh, Eva will be reconstructing every single SD frame into HD by default. So as you have finished scanning with the Eva, close the scanning panel to start the process of converting regular scans into HD scans. And as a result, you will always get two sets of data, a regular scan and an HD scan. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to keep the SD scans or not, but I'm going to show you a few tricks with the SD scans that could save you some time and could help you to process your project successfully. Uh, but again, I'd like to bring your attention to the fact that since the only way to trigger HD reconstruction for EVA is to close the scanning tab right after scanning, make sure not to interrupt the process because you, as of now, you won't get a chance to do it twice unless you can rescan the object. So as you can see, there aren't that many things to keep in mind when using HD mode. It pretty much boils down to just uh, turning it on adjusting HD data resolution when needed. And for the most projects, you won't need to readjust it. As for the processing, apart from a few nuances that we'll discuss in a minute, the workflow is identical to what you do with your normal uh, Artex Studio projects. OK, and now that brings us to the two most interesting parts of the webinar. First off, let's finally address the, the elephant in the room and talk about the hardware and what you need all that computational power for. As you can tell, HD mode is a very powerful tool that in some cases can make a huge difference. But as any other powerful tool out there, it needs to be used with, uh, with caution or wisely. Uh, that superior reconstruction and resolution that you get comes at a price of uh, your data being a few times heavier than your normal projects, because now you can capture way more points and create way more polygons. So with that said, uh, the most practical advice here that I could give you is avoid capturing unnecessary frames. And here comes the first project from one of our partners. This is a beautiful figurine of the reindeer. Again, let's do a quick measurement just to see how big it is. Okay, 200 millimeters, it's still a fairly small item. Uh, being honest, this is not the prime example of what I'm trying to say right now, but still for such a small figurine, I feel like we could have captured uh, the geometry of the object in its entirety with fewer number of frames. So here, uh, the operator has captured about 2000 frames which is still within the reasonable limits. It's okay, if it was four, that would be a problem, but two, it's still fine. Uh, but I still have a feeling that we could have captured the same geometry. There aren't that many abstracted areas, as you can tell, with uh, maybe 75% of that number, or maybe even a half, something like 1,000, 1,200 frames. So that is the first advice, actually, avoid capturing unnecessary frames. And a few ways of doing so is, uh, first off, move the scanner faster because luckily Leo's and Eva's scanning speed allows you to move faster. Also try not to hold scanner at one place uh, unless it is an important area with a lot of fine geometrical details. And the latest Leo update will help you with that because now if you uh, stop moving the scanner, if you hold it in one place, it will automatically decrease the FPS ratio and it, it will bring it back up once you start moving again. Uh, the third thing that you could do, if you tend to scan slowly, or if it is a new user, uh, you can also decrease FPS manually to about 10. And the last thing, please avoid getting unnecessary background objects in the field of view of the scanner so that you don't capture all that unnecessary data and you don't need to erase it afterwards. You will yeah, avoid quite a lot of, a lot of work. 
unnecessary work. The second tip is choose the HD data resolution multiplier wisely. I know that a lot of us almost subconsciously want to increase all available sliders to the maximum level uh, when aiming for the highest resolution, but we should be specifically careful with the HD data resolution slider. As we have established, it has a huge effect uh, on how long it will take to process your data. So we should not change the default number unless we actually need to. And just to put it into perspective, the maximum resolution multiplier of 36 will make your scans approximately 36 times heavier compared to your HD data. Um, and here comes another project from a partner. This is a fascinating figurine or a statue. It's not particularly big. I want you to appreciate all the details, all, all these fine elements on it. And then I'll switch to Arctic Studio and show you what our partners, or a partner captured. This is absolutely stunning. As you can tell, they captured a lot of fine geometry. Uh, but the reason why I'm showing that project to you is because I still feel like that project can benefit from a high point density parameter. Because as I can tell by the name of the scan, uh, the author used uh, the default number, which is 4x. But here, for that item, there are so many nice fine details that I'm pretty sure we could get even more out of the HD mode uh, in that case, if we use a higher point density, point density number. So for that particular project, we've only kind of scratched the surface of what HD can do to that figurine. So if, if the author of that masterpiece is here, I would suggest to re-import it into Arctic Studio uh, with a higher point density parameter and uh, see what the HD mode can do to it. Okay. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is if you don't need to increase it, please don't. If you feel like your project can benefit from a higher point density, then go ahead and do it. Okay, best practice number three, um, make scans easier to manage. A great way to do that is to limit the number of frames per scan to 500 or 1000. This way, your scans won't be too heavy to use uh, 3D selection on if you need to. And uh, most importantly, it makes them easier to use with locks. So if you need to run another registration with some of your scans locked, uh, it will be way easier than that. It will save you a lot of time. Uh, and speaking of that method, let's have a look at that project right here. Again, this is something that we got from one of our partners. This is the tripod, something that is pretty tricky to scan with an HD mode, oh, pardon, SD mode normally, but HD has done a pretty decent job with everything. All these small knobs, they are clearly visible and distinguishable. And uh, if you take a look at the workspace right here, the author has utilized that method. Uh, they restricted the number of frames per scan, which resulted in them having more scans. But at the same time, the scans are way easier to manage now. Right, uh, okay, let's move on to the next advice, which is uh, optimize RAM usage. Uh, up, unload data that you're not working with currently. So that will help you to um, free up some RAM. And this method is particularly useful if you're working on a laptop or in a PC with not enough RAM. So if that is the case for you, consider scanning in sessions. So you make a scan first, you close the tab, you run HD reconstruction, you unload your scans, save the project, and then you repeat the process. So that way you will be able to capture the object uh, fully, capture and reconstruct it in HD fully. Uh, one more thing you could do to optimize your RAM or to free up some RAM is disabling 3D rendering in the view menu sometimes it's just a matter of a few uh, extra gigabytes of RAM, whether you will be able to run Fusion or not. So if that's your case, then feel free to turn it off. 
Trick number five, uh, use the new Artec features to decrease processing time. Artec Studio 15.1 introduces a couple of interesting instruments uh, to make it easier dealing with the new highly detailed scans. So the first feature that will help you with that is called copy transformation feature. Uh, depending on the point density, HD scans might take considerably longer to register and align. So if your PC doesn't have enough resources to register large HD scans, there is a special new tool that uh, allow you to instantly copy scans registration from normal SD data to your highly detailed uh, HD data sets. And here how you use it. First, you align and register your SD scans as you normally would. Then you right click uh, on your SD scan, the first scan, uh, click copy, uh, yeah, click on copy transformation. And then you click on the respective HD scan on the HD copy of that very scan, right click and uh, choose apply or paste transformation. And then you need to repeat it for all the scans one by one. This way, transformation from SD scans will uh, be copied, giving S HD scans the same global registration results that SD data have. Um, if transformation uh, is performed on, uh, on the wrong scan, so let's say if you try to copy transformation from the SD scan one to HD scan two, the result will be unpredictable most likely your frames will be positioned in a chaotic manner. Um, so yeah, be, sh be sure to visually check all the HD scans before making a fusion. Uh, however, if, you're, if you need maximum resolution, so if you plan to use 0 0.2, it is still recommended to use global registration on HD data anyway, because uh, higher point density that your HD scans have um, allows global registration to register everything more successfully. And as you have, if you have worked on an HD project, you might have noticed that the maximum error parameter is normally just a half from what you get for your SD scans. So if the max error for SD is 0 0.6, then for HD, it will be about 0 0.3. Another feature that could help you to save some time on post-processing uh, is called downsampling. So HD scans are longer to register due to them containing more points. And uh, we've introduced that setting that allows you to kind of address that problem. Uh, it allows the user to control how much slower the registration will be compared to uh, regular scans. So decreasing the setting increases the default speed of registration, but in turn, it decreases the quality of registration by geometry. Uh, the results that you get with downsampling active uh, depends on the data density setting that you use. So the bigger your density is, the smaller the downsampling setting can be without any considerable decrease in registration quality. The recommended ratio of dome sampling is around one divided by X, where X is the density that you used. Uh, by the way, don't forget to use the right preset because now we introduce two new presets, uh, Leva HD and Eva HD. So please use them when you're working with HD data. Uh, the default number for dome sampling feature of your HD scans is 0 0.3, by the way. And yeah, you can play with it depending on the point density. Um, but uh, the best way to address any problem with the HD mode and not worry about processing time is to use the right hardware. So as you can see, it doesn't require a NASA supercomputer to be able to work with HD mode, but the more advanced your hardware is, the better. Uh, here, we've put together three categories of equipment that you could use. And uh, if you need any more guidance with that, please get in touch with our technical support team. Okay, we are getting towards the second interesting part, which is HD related challenges. In this last section, I'd like to address some challenges that you may come across when working with the HD mode. We analyzed user feedback thoroughly, 
combine it with our own experience, and here is what we got. The most common problem is the GPU reconstruction failure. Uh, what happens is a user gets a warning in the log window saying something along the lines of hardware acceleration is unavailable. It means that the GPU has failed to be initialized by the software and HD reconstruction is performed on the CPU. Um, another similar problem is the HD reconstruction speed being uh, inadequately low. So both of these issues, as well as a fair share of the rest of them, can be solved by updating or reinstalling the GPU adapter drivers. So please download them from the official website, the, the latest driver, and uh, it is highly recommended to install it in a so-called clean installation to avoid possible compatibility problems. Uh, the corresponding checkbox can be found in the advanced or custom section during the uh, installation process. When you try HD for the first time, we suggest doing a quick GPU test. Uh, having updated the driver, record a small scan of about 100 frames using the HD mode, then close the tab and wait until the reconstruction is completed. Um, Consequently, in the log window, you can see how long it took for the algorithm to perform the conversion. So now we can calculate frames reconstructed per second ratio. The number will vary depending on the GPU that you're using, but on average, it should be from three to eight frames per second for the EVA. And for the LEO, the FPS should be along the lines of one or three. Uh, we have done some tests with a number of different GPU adapters, both desktop and mobile versions. And you can see the results on the screen right now. If your numbers are within these limits, then you are ready for the HD mode. But if reconstruction speed is significantly lower uh, than what you can see right now, then it's likely that your GPU is not being used. And the last possible challenge I'd like to bring your attention to today is uh, wavy or grainy surfaces on your HD fusions. Uh, this is something you might see if you choose a very high resolution number, but also use a low HD data resolution parameter. Uh, normally this effect can be seen on medium or medium to large objects. Let me show you one more project I've got here somewhere. There you go. This is not the exactly the, the object that we got from the partner because I, I had to simplify it. So the original geometry is better, it's sharper. But if you look closer, you can see some artifacts, some, uh, some bumps on all of the surfaces of the object. And when I was going through the project, I noticed that in the name of the scans, there was the multiplier number, the multiplier, the HD density multiplier number uh, in the name of the scans, and it was 2.56, which is lower than the default one for Leo. So uh, the this is the result. This is what happens when you use a lower point density, but still use high resolution, because when it comes to resolution, this has been fused with the resolution of 0 0.3. Still pretty impressive nonetheless. If it wasn't for the bumps, that would be a fascinating project. It still is, but yeah, could be just a little bit better. That's it for today. Thank you for your attention and good luck with 3D scanning using HD mode.